Hello, and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Jacqueline Reinhardt, an innovation and transformation executive. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DBTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity. And this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management to understand how they got there and to talk with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To get up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Jacqueline Reinhardt, an innovation and transformation executive. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest. But in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Jacqueline, hello and welcome. Hi. So excited to be here and connect and share. Me too. And I'm so excited to have you uh, uh, join us today. You, I, We met through our membership with Chief which is very exciting. It's the first chief member we've had on. Um, So uh, I'm very honored that you are here. Uh, If you're not familiar with Chief, or for those who are not familiar with Chief, it's an organization built to help elevate women in executive leadership roles. So uh, tell me, so you're currently working as a consultant, as an innovative and transformation executive. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, it naturally evolved from taking a step back in my career to gain some perspective and follow my heart. After 20 years as an executive leading in branded fintech to Fortune 50 companies, I wanted to take a step back and offer my expertise at the regional and grassroots level of transformation. To do that, I picked up I moved from San Francisco to Hawaii, and I began to make things happen. In Honolulu, I shifted to a regional community level, fortunate to work for a former colleague in a role that was created for me to help the organization modernize with data, AI, and digital transformation. There, I had the opportunity to lead with a human-centric and community focus which was just what I was looking for. That then launched me into a working sabbatical where I could transfer my skills to the community grassroots efforts there using data, insights, and transformation principles to work on issues like food independence. My community building also included a desire to nurture Hawaii's tech and startup community. With all of that, I returned full circle to emerging technologies and found a renewed joy and passion in data, AI, and digital transformation. At the same time, uh, with this full circle return and passion-filled heart, I um, all the headlines were emerging around chat GPT and Gen AI. And this inspired me to spread the word on the practical mindset and change framework needed for transformation within the uh, emerging technology space. This then led me to serve as an AI revolutionary, serving as an innovation and transformation executive, as well as serving as a fractional chief AI officer, which stands for chief artificial intelligence officer. Included with that are opportunities to speak, present, and blog to spread the word on enlightening what often feels like to some a blur in the buzz of AI and the data space. Uh, So cool. And Hawaii, you know, what better place to regroup? And and that's a great place. I love that so much. Well, let's get into that a little bit more, but um, so let's back it up. So is 
uh, this what you wanted to be when you grew up? Say, I, I'm going to be a, an innovative and transformation executive, fractional CAIO. Uh, what was the dream? <laughs> well, my dream was actually while wanting to lead change and transformation in the world, it was wanting to do it as a lawyer, fighting for justice mm -hmm. and making the world a better place. And in fact, I did just that. And it was that journey that exposed me to data transformation and innovation, which captured my attention. That's very cool. So, so you became a lawyer. That so, and then and then what? So where did you go from there? So if you so you get your law degree, uh, and then um, you went into practicing law. I worked actually in a really incredibly special um, and first uh, first type of group in New York City for the NYPD, the New York City Police Department, and they had this creative law and this creative creative approach to um, to use data and insight and information for several things. One was to use those statistics and information to focus in on criminal activities and then the root causes of those, and then use legal, um, certain legal law and um, criminal activities and creative partnering across the cities with different agencies and then community organizations to root out the crime and then draw in economic investment. And so in that space, neighborhoods like Harlem, Washington Heights, the Lower East Side in New York City, all that grassroots stuff um, became to, uh, you know, came to fruition and started to happen. And I had never seen, particularly in government, uh, using data and information to both feed and source the strategic decisionings and tactics to create these programs that I led, and also ultimately create an accountability within um, the organization and the heads of uh, the chiefs to really statistically look at things and hold people accountable and track the progress and success. Oh, that is fascinating. It was. So where this did why you... it captured yeah. my attention. It was yeah. Long, yeah, great. And I'm litigating and I was doing incredible, crazy stuff like wearing bulletproof vests and leading raids in the middle of the night, just creative things that lawyers and policing in partnership don't do together. But uh, data, data, all that sexy stuff. But no, I was all about what's this data thing? What's innovation? What's transformation? And this is what I actually want to do. Oh, that's amazing. So where did you take it from from there? Well, I wanted to make sure that if I was completely changing careers, uh, that I wanted to learn more about the space. So I went to business school and I first thought, hmm, I love public finance, the innovation elements, and that's probably what I want to do. And it turns out I discovered this thing that I didn't know a lot about, which is technology. And I fell in love with it and all the possibilities that it held for the future of the world in terms of um, creating, making things happen, transforming products, our lifestyles, how things work in the world. And so I graduated and I went, uh, began my business career in San Francisco, which at that time was the hub of technology innovation in the, com in, uh, in the country at that time. And from there, I just thrived in leading what first was digital transformation and then what evolved into AI innovation. And I did it in all, in all forms, in all stages, in various launches, and I was hooked. And that hook and that passion um, just continues. Oh, I just love that. So, um, gosh, you know, that's a uh, way to follow your passion, way to follow, you know, not be afraid to, you know, almost, you know, start over, go back to school, get yet another degree and uh and and then change and just move across you know the country <laughs> to <laughs> to put yourself in the middle of where you wanted to be that's that's very very encouraging so you know and then we've covered a little bit you know about your story then from is san francisco is there is there more there there that led to you going to hawaii um and then uh and then it sounds like you got into the big passion projects there as well Yes, yes. I, I, my, my career uh, mostly in San Francisco was fantastic in the sense of both leading and creating in first ever roles 
to drive the transformation to then also see what was going on around me. And in a lot of the transformation, often we partnered with um, flourishing startups. And in that way of giving back, I had the opportunity to help from a more seasoned structured environment, give them the structure and the formulation and sometimes work products and thinking to help them grow um, in whatever ventures they were doing as well. And that aspect of giving and helping them structure things is ultimately what I, you know, through my, through my journeys from San Francisco and wanting to take a step back uh, and leading in these, um, uh, you know, very uh, high profile, very prolific, complex uh, transformations to go back to those basics. Uh, and connect to people that are just have some great ideas and they want to unpack things from the start onward. Oh, so very cool. Uh, and it's, and I love, you know, it just, it, it, you provide a really good example of how data can lead you anywhere and follow anything uh, and, and just enables you to follow your passion from, from tech, uh, tech to community building, um, and just whatever is driving your heart at the moment, right? Yes. There's so many opportunities. Yes. And what's so exciting about data is that I can say do AI innovation or digital transformation, but the root of it, which people don't sometimes realize, is it's all that all starts with the data. How you it's not just systems and infrastructure, those technologies, those innovations are there to drive new information and ways of doing things, and everything is premised in data. It's so very true, so very true. So, okay, so tell me, uh, Jacqueline, um, so what's been the biggest lesson so far for you in your career? Always follow your heart leading in the business world as a revolutionary innovator, leading uh, with approaches that were creative versus traditional, taking two working sabbatical breaks that are not conventional over 20 years, and continuing to follow my heart with confidence and certainty really has enabled me to have a rich and colorful career and an armament of abilities and a perspective that I wouldn't have otherwise had that continues to be relevant and passion filled when I get to lead in data and technology. Oh, I love that advice. Or I love that lesson and 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 way to, you know, take a chance and and follow that again. Um so, you know, now that you've kind of dive, taken a dive into data, you know, and that's become your passion and along with the, you know, the tech side of things, really the AI, you know, what is your definition of data? Simply, I define data as information. Then I elaborate on what information means. Information comes in different forms and it includes numbers, text concepts, images, and sounds. For purposes of business, it can be qualitative and quantitative. For AI, it can be structured and unstructured. Overall though, business data serves as that foundation for insights, knowledge, and decision-making in everything. Now we- Absolutely, okay, yeah. Oh, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that, you know, I mean, it's something that we get asked a lot, you know, uh, especially since you focus on AI, how important is it to manage your data going into, into AI, all this AI tech? Well, at the start, before I decide what to do, mm -hmm. the basic data informs and validates my strategic decision. So it helps prioritize, validate, set context in terms of how am I going to approach an AI strategy? It then, um, with that structure in place, it allows me to then um, put inputs in and get outputs from, from that. And from there, that allows me to then look at things end to end of how a business is working, what each experience of a user process may be, and again, all of that before I've even established and structured my AI project, 
I'm being informed by data. Then I take all of that data, then with my human creativity and my abilities, I inform then how I strategize and the AI solutions that I want to make happen. That data informed the assessment, the analysis, where I needed to focus. And once all I have that, that's just the beginning. Then there's the next stage of how am I selecting data? Because why, why am I doing what I'm doing? And what do I need to put into it so I get out why, what I, I need from it? And that there's a purpose for why I'm doing it too. It leads to some sort of better experience, some solution, uh, an easier way to do something. And again, that end result is measured in Zeta. Did I achieve what, it, what I wanted to do? So data is everywhere, end to end, from start to finish. And then that data too, oh, this is, this is successful. Oh, I can do better here. It just evolves in um, evolution and then goes back into the circuitry and the circularity of data and AI innovation. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. Very nice. Um, so, Jacqueline, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? So the short answer is uh, data will be will continue to stay important. And it's not so much will the number of jobs increase or decrease. It's a matter of how those jobs will morph. And so let me explain why. So data management is a critical component of, of a business as I just alluded to in terms of how data is everywhere and in everything that I even do in, in, my, in my space. Given data informs and touches every aspect of the business, both externally and internally, it will remain important. When you think about data management in the context of technology and AI, it's a partnership between machines and humans. So those humans, those data touching jobs, they don't go away. Humans design the technology. Humans test the technology to ensure it works. Humans create those models. They maintain the models and the technology, and they use the technology to then apply more of their human creativity to then continue to work with the data. So it's a matter of how those data jobs will morph versus increasing or decreasing per se. Per se. AI technology in terms of just straight up existing jobs today offers the opportunity for people that interact with data as input for their job to take away those mundane and labor intensive data entry aspects of their job, synthesis of that data and information and the calculations of the data. So there may be some reductions of those types of jobs, but then it creates the opportunity in those jobs or the morphing of those jobs for humans to do other types of jobs, like creating those data models, per defining the purpose of, of those models, having more bandwidth to apply human ingenuity on how to use the output data and actually do a slew of jobs that we haven't even thought of or, or have created yet, which is often reflected in how industrial revolutions operate. So similarly to the industrial revolutions in the past, this what's called the fourth industrial revolution at the turn of the century has created all kinds of new, new data jobs that didn't exist before. And so that momentum of continuing to create new jobs with the continuous evolution of database technologies will create all kinds of new possibilities. So there's that, again, not increase, decrease, but the morphing of what those jobs will be like. And less mundane and more human creative build. 
Yeah, no, I, I absolutely, I, I love that. Uh, I love that answer. And you're absolutely right. And um, we're already seeing some, you know, uh, indications of that already. Uh, so um, now what advice then would you give to people who are looking to get into a career in data management? I'd offer up three points. One is determine upfront what you're good at and you like to do. That's key and number one. Number two, once you actually know what you're good at and you like to do, that's where from that point is where you assess what aspects or functions of data and AI management interest you and then fit with what you want to do. And then third, speak with people in the field, explore job descriptions, attend conferences and get into the mix to start to do the work. And with those three examples about what I like to do, what are the aspects and functions of data and AI, there's so much to explore. As context, data and AI management is a big, big space. There are strategic versus tactical aspects. There's governance, risk, security, compliance, privacy, and ethical aspects. There's the data modeling versus the engineering and the architecturing of data. Functionally, there's finance, marketing, sales, customer service, operations, community, and strategy elements. And then there are those business, legal, and technical elements. Again, so much to explore in this space and an incredibly exciting time to do so as the opportunities and those permutations of the opportunities continue to flourish. Yeah, so true. Uh, and again, like we talked about earlier, you know, it can be applied to any industry. You know, you can marry those passions. I talk about that a lot on this podcast about how you can marry those passions, passion for the very different aspects of data. Like you say, like you can, there's so many different ways to slice and dice it and so many job descriptions within data management itself and then marry it with the passion of a company or an industry that you also are passionate about. It's just so very cool, which you've, again, a clear demonstration of following that passion uh, on both sides, which I just love. Um, and Jacqueline, uh, you know, so you mentioned that you are uh, a fractional uh, CAIO which is a very cool and title. So tell me a little bit about what your role is as a CAIO and why companies bring you in to do to, to that role. There are an incredible amount of considerations and buzz that have been going on with the release of Gen AI and uh, Chat GPT. And with that, there is a an urgency, whether true or false, that everybody has to either catch up or start leading in this space. So people come to me often interestingly with, well, how can you help me with Gen, Gen AI? And interestingly enough, I often back them up and say the things that you actually want to do have existed for years, are proven, and can be done with the actual AI technologies that exist. So a lot of times, a lot of my initial work is having to listen, understand, and, and know why they wanna do something, and then help them take a step back to actually differentiate and understand the concepts that are just loosely being thrown around and often aren't clearly defined. And from that, wearing that same hat that I've worn for years is, okay, if you want to do something like that, let's strategically set that framework up. Why do you want to do it? What are you trying to achieve? What's your spend? What makes sense for you? And sort of do that strategic assessment. And also, as, as mentioned earlier, understand what the data is telling them in terms of what that ROI would be or what that impact would be on your, um, on your customers and figure out those opportunities and also the low hanging fruits because you can make incredible uh, progress with a phase and stage uh, set of projects that are fantastic that 
um, that that demonstrate innovation and ways to embrace innovation, but also those phase sequence phase as well to actually clean up your data to feed those efforts. So ultimately they come with some guidance. I try to break it down and through my years of experience and understanding change and transformation, piece it out. And it doesn't necessarily mean you holistically have to apply it in, in every space in your organization based upon your needs, your size of your organization or your budget. There are decisions you need to make. And maybe you use AI in one space, but maybe you use a, a spreadsheet in another space. You don't have to necessarily automate and um, and load up on uh, these these technologies and the tools that are not right fitted for your organization. So those are the details of me coming in, helping them understand what they need, the strategy behind it, creating the right fitted phased approach for them and being there with them on the continuity journal as a journey as they need it, hence the word fractional versus uh, permanent. And what I like about the fractional elements is often people need the structure, that expertise, and then they start learning it and they can start making some of those decisions and be self-sufficient on their own and then draw me back in when they need that additional expertise or get stuck somewhere. I uh, love it. Uh, and if uh, somebody wanted to, a company wanted to solicit your services, how would they reach out? LinkedIn. Uh, I'm really attentive at uh, messages people send me. So that's the easiest way without anybody having to write anything down and track me down. I love it. And we'll put your LinkedIn, uh, the link to your LinkedIn profile in on the page for this podcast. Oh, well, Jacqueline, this has been such a pleasure to chat with you and get to know you better and, and hear about your incredible journey. Yes. And what I have to say too, which, which is very exciting for me is that being a woman in this space has been very groundbreaking as well, particularly being in an often male dominated um, environment. And uh, it's so exciting in terms of this current environment bringing more women and inclusivity of all different looking types of people to be able to give them that opportunity and support and advise them in this next uh, data and technological innovation and uh, space that we're in in the world. So it's fun too that I have, there's a woman who's the chief digital officer of Dataversity and who's also a chief fellow member who supports women at all levels as well. And so it's such an honor and privilege on my end as well to be a part of it and be able to help share information and insights with the listeners. Jacqueline, thank you so much. I really appreciate and yeah, such an important, important uh, initiative for, for all of us, right? To, to lift each other up, all of us, no matter gender, race, uh, and any other defining demographic. <laughs> yes. So, uh, well, thank you so much again for taking the time to chat with us today. Thank you again and for having me. Really appreciate it. And it's been such a pleasure. And to all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date on the latest in podcasts and the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe.